Senate, Giannis and the Bucks have until December 21st to work out a possible Supermax extension. The two-time MVP was interviewed while he was on vacation in Greece. And this is interesting. When asked about the ice, well, he talked about playing with them. But in Wisconsin, he said, this is a statement I have never made before. If LeBron and Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis came to Milwaukee, I would have been good with that. He said, I'm not interested if I have to be the top. I don't care if I'm the second or third name, okay? Because I just want to win. And if I got LeBron, KD, Davis, if all of those came, I wouldn't mind at all. I don't care if I'm the top player on the team. So, Kendrick, I, I, first of all, if you're a Bucks fan, you got to love that he's talking about, sure, let's talk about superstar team-ups, but in Milwaukee. What do those comments signal to you about what? Giannis and how he sees his place in the NBA? Well, it, it just it just solidified why I picked the Miami uh, Dade County goons to beat them last year in the bubble because I knew that Giannis wasn't ready for this big moment and to be the number one guy. And all he did was stamp that by saying what he said today. Perk. Ah, that's not your look. First, first of all, I got a lot of heat for saying he was a Pippin. Pip yelled at me. That's my guy. I apologize. <laughs> but ultimately, what he's saying here is that, look, I just want to win. It's very similar. If James Harden knows that if he goes with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, there is no, no 35 points a game at the top of the key ISO. It's all about like having to move the ball. Giannis just wants to win. We believe that Giannis wants that. But do we believe that other superstars are willing to go? And the last thing I'll say, Giannis doesn't want to go team up with somebody. He doesn't want to be viewed as the type of guy that had to go someplace to win. So he's inviting what? people to come there. So it's the exact same thing, Giannis. I hate to break it to you. If you ask Braun or ask Anthony Davis to come to Milwaukee, or if you go join up with them, there is no difference. There is but, no, but, don't let but, people wait, confuse you. Guys, you. you guys are both, I, I am confused about this because all we say we want players to be is good teammates. And, and what Steph Curry did when Kevin Durant came was really, <laughs> really, really hard. And he did it. He didn't say, I have to be number it one, was. all of that. And guess what? It worked. They were in the finals for five years. They won three titles. I know one was without KD. But the point is, that was an example of superstar ego taking a backseat to winning team concept. Don't we want that from you? Yeah, like but there's a different... Th Ra Ra Rachel, Rachel, we're not. I'm not criticizing him. I'm just saying that for a long time, the narrative has been is that Giannis is not going to go team up with somebody else. He wants to be the best player. He is a two-time MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, only one of three players that have ever Thank won you. both in the same year. And he's Thank now you. trying to say he doesn't matter to him if he's the first or second best player. He should be trying to be the best player in the world. He's won the MVPs. He's won all of the awards. But now he's inviting other players, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with him inviting other players. But you know what, Giannis? If you pack your bags and go join up with one of those guys, it's the exact same thing. But, if you win a championship, Rachel, sorry, but go ahead, Perk, before I get all hot. But Rachel, but Rachel was Steph, Steph was already a championship up when he invited KD to his team and to his city and to his culture. So it's a difference. All I'm saying to Giannis is, is that, like Richard was saying, you're in the category with Akeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan for the only player to win defensive player of the year and the MVP. Own that. It's okay to be the man. It's okay to be the man. Don't ever go backwards and say that I'd be okay with being a number two or number three option. No. Y'all keep okay. moving the bar. The you keep moving the finish line. You keep moving yes. the bar. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh my Lord. Lord. We moved again tomorrow. We're going to keep discussing this in the commercial break. Up next, the Rockets and we discussed the Russell Westbrook for John Wall trade earlier in the show, but what does it mean for James Harden? Woj reported that Harden wants a trade to the Nets, but also that the Rockets don't see that happening. Now, on Tuesday, Kevin Durant was asked if he had talked to Harden about it. Here's what he said. I don't know where you're making these stories up that me and James talked about any of this at a workout. Like, I don't know where that came from. And James is a friend of mine, but I let the front office handle all of that stuff. I was just so focused on working out. I heard all the noise, and I heard that, you know, James potentially wanted to come to the Nets, but you know, anybody can make up stories. Anybody can write a story, and it, and it, take, and it gets some traction. So, you know, nothing's ever set in stone till it's, till it's set in stone. So I never thought too much about it. I just focused on myself, and my teammates probably did the same thing, you know, we just move forward. Richard, producer Steve didn't put that in BS or Real Talk segment, but I don't know. Do you, do you believe him? And, and what do you think the rush trade means for Harden's future? 
No, I, I, I believe Kevin Durant because I know this and and it was that's why it was a little surprising that, uh, you know, him and Kyrie teamed up in New York uh, is because the media has a tendency to bite on to something and really run with it. Um, he's right. He lets the front office do what, 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 what he does. And that Kevin Durant that I heard right there is the same Kevin Durant that we heard towards the end of his time in Golden State, where he doesn't want to answer questions about other players. He doesn't want to answer questions about trades or free agency. He wants to get back to playing basketball. So I 100 percent believe him in that moment. As far as the, as far as the James Harden situation goes, I, 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 what I see, and we're going to talk about Giannis, what I see from James is that, okay, it's great. I've, I've scored a lot of points. I've made my mark. I've won my MVP. I want to win a championship now. All of that scoring and all of that stuff is secondary. Well, Rachel, I have no comment on KD. All I'm going to do is this. I have no comment whether I believe him or not. That's, I'm going to leave that up in the air. But I will say this about James Harden's situation with the Rockets. The Rockets are not about to give him up right now. And they're, they're, they're going to try to hold this thing out. And from what I'm hearing is they're going to try to have a trial run for like the first half of the season or maybe the first 25 games to see how it goes. Now, what you should be looking for is looking at what the Philadelphia 76ers are doing 25 games in and then look at what the Rockets are doing 25 games in. If it's not working well with James Harden and John Wall, I expect Daryl Morey to be aggressive in pursuing James Harden. Trust me. Well, this James yeah, but Harden, wait, wait, real, wait, ahead, real, real quick. No, no. So, like, it, let's say, uh, again, Philly would most likely want to would want to not give up, you know, Joel Embiid. Or let's say, because then you would think John Wall and Ben Simmons, you couldn't trade Ben Simmons for, uh, for, for James Harden. So I just, I don't know. I put Philly on the outside of that list only from the standpoint of, you know, Joel Allen B would really be the only major star. Because if you tried to pair Ben Simmons with John Wall, that's not a match that anyone well, wants to see. And I get that, RJ, but we're talking about Daryl Moore. Daryl Moore is known to pull rabbits out the hat. So don't don't just think of it as just Ben Simmons. You, it could be a three-team trade or whatever the case may be, but he's going to pursue James Harden if the Rockets are 25, 30 games in and not doing well. Trust me. Well, this, okay. is, this is going to be an interesting case study with the Houston Rockets and James Harden in this age of player empowerment. The team obviously built everything around James, gave him the Supermax, and then last year made a trade for Russell Westbrook that, frankly, some of the front office wouldn't, but let's just say they wouldn't have made it if it was up to them. A and yet, now he wants to be traded somewhere else, and he's got two years left on his deal. How much they decide to cater to what he wants, how he decides to play while he is still in Houston, this is going to be very interesting to watch. Now, just a friendly reminder, I'm one of the uh, Coach Doc Rivers. Well, you take a listen. So when I came back into the league and started playing again, it, I just felt off. Like, I didn't feel like a, a part of the team. And then, you know, the way I was being used, I felt like I was, you know, Doc was trying to play me as like a, a Ray Allen or like a J.J. Mm -hmm. Redding, like all pin downs, all like, I can do it, but that ain't my game, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I need some flow. I need some mixes of, of pick and rolls. I need some post-ups. All that. Just different touches, you know what I mean? All right, Perk, is PG saying that Doc didn't play him in the right spot? <laughs> BS or real talk? I, I can't tell what your answer is. It's just hard to hard to see where you're going here. <laughs> that's it? You know what, Rachel? That's, B that's, that's BS. Matter of fact, that's a bunch of BS. And it was a coward move by Paul George by blaming Doc Rivers for his lack of productivity and not being accountable for him not showing up on the basketball court. Because of anybody who watched the Clippers play this season and, and in the bubble, know that Paul George wasn't just coming off of pin downs, that he had the ball in his hands, he was able to run pick and rolls, he was able to get post ups. You, do you know this past season when Paul George had the ball in his hands, it was the most ever that he ran.